to run the ANOVA test and the associated tests of the assumptions, we need to load one library. It's a library called CAR. The data that we are going to use is the data that I showed in the earlier part of the video involving the red, blue, and green cockroach electroretinogram data. So we can load that and see the format of it. We have one grouping variable uh, or a factor called color, and then the response is the voltage response of the eye. We can fit the model as we have with other models. And the residuals, we can pull out. That's basically how different each point within a group is from its group mean. That allows us to, to lump together all the residuals for each of the three colors into a single group and therefore avoid having to separate them out and test each one of the normalities separately. We can look at a histogram of this and we see, as we saw in the case of the t-tests of mean, the distribution is somewhat skewed to the right. If we run a Shapiro test on these residuals, we see that uh, they do differ quite significantly from being normal. So this is a problem that we will want to try to fix. If we pass the model into the plot function, as we did for regressions, then we can go down here to the console and hit enter. And it will show us a chart of the residuals, only this time it's not uh, fitted against continuous uh, y values, but rather the y values that are the means of the three different colors. So these dots over here are actually the red ones, and then I don't know which one is green and blue. We can see from the spread of these numbers that they are uh, quite different in their variance. The red numbers have a much smaller variance than the blue and the green. If we hit enter again, we'll see a normal quantile plot. Uh, part of the data fit the straight line reasonably well, but over here, things really go out of control. So based on the histogram, the normal quantile plot, and also the Shapiro test, we have some significant problems. We can test for heterogeneity of variance using Bartlett's test as we did before. And when we run the test, we see that it's highly significant. So they're not homogeneous. One problem with Bartlett's test is it's actually overly conservative. There have been a lot of statisticians who have um, tested this and found that actually it is uh, okay to have p-values that are quite a bit higher than what Bartlett's test gives you. So there are actually two other alternative tests. One is called Levine's test. The other is called the Brown-Forsyth test. And the difference between these tests depends on what they use as their measure of centrality for the groups. Levine's test uses means and Brown-Forsyth test uses medians. But either one of these tests usually produces fairly similar values. If we run Levine's test, we get P is 0. 0.00015. And for the Brown-Forsyth test, we get 0, 0, 008. So there is, uh, both of these do turn out to be significant but both of them also produce p-values that are much higher than the overly severe Bartlett's test. So we're going to basically stop using Bartlett's test here. We used it before because it was really easy to use and we didn't 
have to load any other libraries, but um, the consensus is that using probably Levine's test is the best. <laughs>